get what we want. Hey! 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 Isabel Sente! We know what we want to do. It's another opportunity for us to get better. Alabama has won the match. How you compete, that means how hard you play, how tough you play, how you can sustain in tough circumstances. Welcome to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. I'm Chris Ringland alongside Maggie Hetzel. You know, it's always great to go watch a game in Bryant Denny, but when you've got Joe Namath, Mark Ingram, the 2009 National Championship in there, it's filled with greats. It was a great atmosphere for homecoming for the Crimson Tide as number one ranked Alabama hosted the Arkansas Razorbacks on Saturday night in Bryant Denny Stadium. As Maggie said, with it being homecoming, there are a lot of former Crimson Tide greats in attendance. Joe Namath, Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram, and other members of the 2009 National Championship team. The 2009 team is Coach Saban's first of five National Championship teams here at Alabama and his only undefeated team as coach of the Crimson Tide. Mark Ingram became the Crimson Tide's first Heisman Trophy winner that season. The 2009 champions were honored minutes before kickoff. And just like the 2019, the number one ranked Crimson Tide, they dominated from the kickoff after forcing a Razorbacks punt on their opening possession. Mac Jones, he led the Crimson Tide on a scoring drive for their first possession. And then Joseph, Joseph Bolivis put the Alabama up 3 to nothing from 31 yards out to cap off the scoring drive. And then on the next drive, a high snap caused a fumble after a scramble for the ball. Christian Harris picks it up. He runs down 37 yards to the Arkansas 14. And then on the very next play, Mac Jones connected with Henry Ruggs on the post route for the touchdown, 10 to nothing, Crimson Tide. And 10 to nothing, then the Crimson Tide forced another turnover on the Razorbacks' next possession. This time, Anthony Jennings made a great driving play on a defection, deflection to intercept the pass, and then Mac Jones and the Alabama offense converted their second consecutive turnover into points. Jones connected with Jerry Judy on a screen pass, and Judy does the rest. 14 yards for the score, and the Crimson Tide is up 17 to nothing with just 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. And then after another Arkansas punt to start off the second quarter, Alabama got on the scoreboard again. A sixth play, seven. 70-yard drive capped off by a one-yard Najee Harris touchdown, 24 to nothing Bama. And then Alabama defense is playing lights out, forcing another punt. And then it's Najee Harris once again, another one-yard touchdown run. The run, the tide is in complete command of the game, 31 to nothing. The Alabama defense continued the Arkansas offense. This one right here, intercepted by Starkle, intercepted Patrick Sertain. Patrick returned it. 24 yards down. Then Joseph Bulbas would add to the Tide's lead with this 30-yard field goal to make it 34 to nothing Crimson Tide, but the defense wasn't even close to being done. Trayvon Diggs stepped in front of the Nick Starkle pass and he wouldn't be caught. After having a 100-yard fumble return for touchdown last week, this week Diggs takes an interception 84 yards for the score the route was on as the Tide was up big 41 to nothing. The scoring continued for Bama on their first possession of the second half. Matt Jones connected with Jerry Judy for the 40-yard score, 48 to nothing Crimson Tide. The Razorbacks added a touchdown in the fourth, but it didn't matter as number one Alabama rolled big on homecoming, 48 to seven. Really pleased with the way we came out and played, you know, especially in the first half. Um, you know, Mac did a really good job of executing the offense. He was very efficient and effective in the passing game. Did a nice job on third down, kept a lot of drives going. Um, I think we had four turnovers or whatever on defense in the second half, which led to 24 points, which was, you know, really good. Um, thought the guys played hard and competed hard in the game. And, you know, we could have finished the game a little better in the second half, but had the opportunity to play a lot of players. Uh, got a lot of experience, you know, with some of those players. And I think that's probably the most important thing, you know, for our team right now. Making his first career start, redshirt sophomore quarterback Matt Jones led the Crimson Tide, completing, a, completing 18 of 22 for 235 yards and three touchdowns in a little over two quarters of play. Jerry Judy led the Crimson Tide in receiving on seven catches for 103 yards and two touchdowns. Najee Harris had 86 yards on the ground on 13 carries. And then freshman linebacker Shane Lee led the Alabama defense with six tackles, including five solo stops, two tackles for loss, and a sack. Freshman linebacker Christian Harris also had six tackles, including four solo and a 37-yard fumble recovery. That led to a touchdown in the first quarter. And then Terrell Lewis, he had three tackles and six quarterback hurries in all the Crimson Tide defense, forced four turnovers, including the 86-yard pick by Trayvon Diggs.
What a win it was, own homecoming for the Crimson Tide. It was Alabama's 13th win in a row over the Arkansas Razorbacks and improves the Crimson Tide's homecoming record to an impressive 85-13. and And with that win, Alabama has defeated 89 consecutive unranked teams under head coach Nick Saban, the longest streak in FBS history. Current streak began with a win over Colorado way back in the 2007 Independence Bowl. Despite the dominant win for the Crimson Tide, is the new number one in the Associated Press poll this week, and there was another upset in the top five. The Riders made LSU their new number one team, but just barely. Alabama has four more first place votes in LSU, but the Riders moved the Tigers past the Crimson Tide by just two points. But there's no need to worry about who's number one or number two. It'll all get sorted out on the field in Bryant-Denny next Saturday. Behind the Tigers and Tide is Ohio State at three, Clemson at four. Last week's number five Oklahoma was upset by Kansas State, and that opened the door for Penn State to move into the top five for the first time this season. Florida is knocking at the door of the top five at six. Georgia moved up two spots to eight. And with a close loss to LSU, Auburn drops two spots to number 11. And then over in the coaches' poll, they feel a little differently. They still have the Crimson Tide at number one by a large margin. Alabama has 41st place votes to just seven for LSU. But LSU did jump Clemson for the number two spot behind Alabama this week. Clemson is third, Ohio State is fourth. Just like in the AP poll, Penn State is fifth, Florida is sixth. And the coaches have Georgia one spot higher at seven, with Auburn one spot lower at 12. This weekend, the Tide has their second bye week of the season, a much-deserved break before the final month of the regular season. After the bye week, number one Alabama will take on number two LSU. That one's going to be a good one. That matchup between number one and two will kick off at 2.30 p.m. on November 9th in Bryant-Denny Stadium. The game will be broadcast live on CBS. Stay with us because coming up next, we'll give you an all-access look inside the Tide's 13th win in a row over the Arkansas Razorbacks. Tide TV this week is brought to you by ATI, built by Bama, rebuilt by ATI Physical Therapy. Ford and the F-150, tough runs in our family. See your local Ford dealer today. AFS, a Bayless company, your foundation and waterproofing specialists, serving you since 2000. Usually we're talking offensive stats, and while they were still impressive as usual this week, the defense earns a little bit of extra love. 24 points off of turnovers, six quarterback pressures from Terrell, Terrell Lewis, a couple of interceptions, and one of those being Trayvon Diggs' pick six. Let's carry that same theme over into LSU next week, don't you think? Yeah. Let's take an all access look at Alabama's win over Arkansas. It's brought to you by ATA. Bryant Denny Stadium on a beautiful Saturday night for college football is set for an SEC Western Division matchup. The Alabama Crimson Tide and the Arkansas Razorbacks. This is a good team, like Coach Saban says. It's an SEC and especially SEC West opponent that you got to get up and get ready to play. Here we see Matt Jones making his first start. Has a good understanding and they expect him to play very efficiently tonight. Through Bama's first possession, they take a three to nothing lead. Bad snap, ball on the ground. Starko can't get there, and it's picked up. The true freshman Christian Harris takes it back inside the 15 yard line. Christian Harris was there for his first fumble recovery, had a 35 yard run back. Bama's in business. Rolling out Jones, looking. End zone. It's caught for a touchdown. Stark all over the middle, ball batted in the air, a diving interception by Jennings. Intercepted by Anthony Jennings. It'll be the eighth interception of the year for the Crimson Tide. Yes, sir. Here's Judy, and he's able to break a tackle, and he's heading in. Touchdown, Alabama. So Alabama takes advantage of those two turnovers by Arkansas, turning both into scores. Smith in the open field, 44-yard gain. The handoff to Najee, he's to the goal line, touchdown Alabama! On to Judy, it's caught again inside the 30. Here's Henry Ruggs on the pitch, inside the 10. Here's Harris again, he's in. It's 30 to nothing, Alabama. Another one-yard touchdown run for Najee Harris. Yes, sir. 
the throw towards Knox. Intercepted by Alabama. Another pick by Patrick Sertan. And down to the 25. Third takeaway by this Bama defense tonight. Now a big third down for Alabama coming up. Here's the quarterback looking, trying to find anybody. It's picked off by Alabama. Third interception by the Crimson Tide. And digs it with a fumble recovery for a touchdown last week as a pick six this week. Touchdown, Bama. How about that way to cap off the half? The most points put up by Alabama in the first half this season. You got to maintain it for all four quarters. So another half of football yet to be played. We got to keep the intensity going. Jones taking a shot here for Judy. The pass is on the money. It's a touchdown. Behind the defense for a touchdown. 40 yards. Two touchdown catches for Judy. John Stephen Jones starts the second half at quarterback for Arkansas, and he's going to get wrapped up and sacked by Shane Lee. And the tide rolls to a 48-7 win over Arkansas. The lights turn crimson in celebration of another Alabama victory. Tide TV this week is brought to you by ATI. Built by Bama. Rebuilt by ATI Physical Therapy. The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Welcome back to Tide TV this week. Fresh off their big soup store, soup, soup store put that one together a couple times, Tide tip-off event, the Alabama men's and women's basketball teams held an exhibition doubleheader in Coleman Coliseum this past Sunday. The men took part in a charity exhibition against Georgia Tech in the first part of the doubleheader with all proceeds going to the American Red Cross Dorian Relief Fund. Leading 40 to 32 at the half, the Crimson Tide used a big second half to easily defeat the Yellow Jackets 93 to 65. Alabama was led by freshman Jaden Shackelford, who scored 21 points off the bench as he connected on 6 of 10 from beyond the arc. Kyra Lewis Jr. had an impressive all-around game with 20 points to go along with 7 rebounds and 8 assists. John Petty Jr. added 15, including 13 in the second half. Alabama shot 46% from three-point range, converting on 17 of 37 from beyond the arc, while also knocking down 12 of 15 from the free throw line. The Crimson Tide forced 24 turnovers and out rebounded the Yellow Jackets 44 32. The Crimson Tide also registered 40 bench points. A lot of sloppiness, especially early. We struggled against the zone, but I think eventually we, we broke them. Our defense was pretty solid to where we ended up getting some stops, some runouts, and kind of opened the game up. And then I think we just kept playing hard. So, biggest thing we were looking for today was making sure our effort was there. And, you know, we end up hitting 17 threes. It helps when you got shooters like these two kind of spacing the floor out. But we'll uh, we'll clean we'll clean up the messy part of it here sometime before conference play. I'm open. And the men will begin their season on Tuesday, November 5th, right here at home as they host Penn. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. Now the women they took on Auburn Montgomery after the men's game against Georgia Tech. Well, it was a lot, and I mean a lot, to a little. Uh, at one point, the Crimson Tide went on a 41-0 run as they dominated Auburn Montgomery 105-16. Alabama connected on all 18 free throw attempts and dominated in the paint, outscoring the Warhawks 48-4. The Alabama bench was huge in this one, outscoring Auburn Montgomery's bench 70-5. The Crimson Tide was led by Brittany Davis, 19 points, while Sierra Johnson also added 10 points in the win. Overall, it was just good to uh, be in a real game environment. I really liked our team yesterday and how we prepared. Really liked our team at shoot around this morning, our pregame, and then our game warm up. I thought we were really good today in all areas um, of pregame. Those kind of things are important. That's hard to simulate. So now we'll go into postgame mode, recovery, and our nutrition and our rest and our study time tonight. And that's what this team needs is to get, simulate a game day. So we're excited about the opportunity this gave us today. The women begin their season one day after the men. Coach Curry's squad opens the season on November 6th as they host Hampton. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 o'clock. And things are getting a little spooky around here. Spooky season coming up next. We'll take you inside the Tide's annual Halloween extravaganza. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. It's Halloween week, and that means a lot of kids will be dressing up and trick-or-treating. 
this year. It's exciting. Yes, it is exciting. And it also means it's Coach Saban's birthday. Coach Saban was surprised at his radio show Hey Coach this past week. Fans sang happy birthday to him, gave him cards, and even brought him a birthday cake. This one even had an extra special message on it. It says there's no rat poison. On <laughs> is that what it says? <laughs> <laughs> That's an extra special message right there. Happy birthday, Coach Saban. Maybe he can take some time and enjoy it, especially since this week is a much-deserved bye week. Maybe, but I can promise you he won't be taking the day off. Also this week, over 250 University of Alabama student athletes held the 17th annual Halloween extravaganza for local kids at the Hank Crisp Indoor Facility. More than 3,000 were in attendance for this year's event. Let's take an all-access look at this year's event. You know, we love doing this event every year. You know, it really brings the community out. And, you know, we love doing this for the kids. You know, I know it means the world to them, you know, being able to interact with athletes, you know, people from the athletic community. So, you know, it's just all about them tonight. And, you know, Halloween's a great time of the year to celebrate that. part about SAC with me is um, meeting so many new people, you know. I love to meet people and make friends, so I, I guess having that platform to make friends and uh, meet a lot of new people and then also do a lot of stuff for the community, that's probably my favorite part. Um, it like means a lot, I know, to, uh, to athletics and to the community to have all the athletes like come and be able to interact with all the kids. Um, it's also a great thing because we have a fundraiser here with Be Auburn Be Hunger and that goes to supporting the West Alabama Food Bank so uh, everyone comes, brings can and that's like a big part of the service that we do. Those were our BBVA Top Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, brought to you by Payless Drugs. Stepping in for an injured Tua Tungvaloa, redshirt sophomore quarterback Mac Jones was impressive. In only two quarters of play, Jones was very efficient as he completed 18 of 22 passes for 235 yards and three touchdowns in those three quarters with no interceptions. When he exited the game after the first series of the third quarter, Crimson Tide led 48 to nothing. And we go with Riley Mattingly with the score tied at one on the road in Columbia. Mattingly's penalty kick in the second half found the net, gave the Crimson Tide the big 2-1 to one win over Missouri on the road. It was Mattingly's fifth goal of the season and improved the Crimson Tide's record to 9-4-3 and three on the year. Now let's take a look at next week's schedule for the Crimson Tide. What's next is brought to you by Renaissance Bank. The Alabama soccer team will be taking part in the SEC tournament beginning on Sunday. On Tuesday, the Alabama men's basketball team will open their season against Penn at 7 p.m. in Coleman Coliseum. And on Wednesday, it's the women's turn as they tip off their season against Hampton here at home. Game time is scheduled for 7 p.m. Men's tennis begins play at the ITA National Fall Championships in Newport Beach, California on Wednesday. And volleyball is home on Friday as they host Missouri at 7. Then on Saturday, it's the big one. It's been called the matchup of the century before. Number one and number two, Alabama and LSU will square off in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Kickoff is scheduled for 2.30. The game will be broadcast on CBS. And volleyball closes out the week on Sunday. The Tide hosts Tennessee at 2 p.m. in Foster Auditorium. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Tide TV this week. Have a great week, everybody. World Tide. World Tide. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.